Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of The Pulse for 2022. I'm Kiana Faircloth, host of Afternoon Jazz, and I'm, I'm just, I'm always excited when I have amazing people on The Pulse, and today is no exception. I feel like I've been uh, wanting to have her on for so long, but she is here today, and I'm super excited to bring on Miss Jasmia Horn. Hi. <laughs> hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm I'm just really excited to have you here and just get to bask in your presence. Oh, thank and, you. And really just, you know, all the wonderful things that you have happening for you in your life right now. You're nominated now, what, a third Grammy nomination? Yes, ma'am. My goodness, you're on the roll here. (laughs) She's won an Image Award. She has her album, Dear Love, out right now, which has been nominated for Grammy. And I feel like it's a historic um, Grammy nomination, especially for Black women. So Mm -hmm. no better time to have you on other than, you know, Black History Month. Of course. So I'm just so excited and honored to have you here and celebrate you as you get ready to grace the stage at the Hudson Jazz Festival, by the way, at Hudson Hall. Yes. Well, thank you so much. I'm a lady. I do listen to your show. So I'm excited about being here. So thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Wow. Where do we get started? You know, when I play your music on Afternoon Jazz, um, Especially Dear Love. I always make sure people know that it's out on your label. Thank you. First Legacy Records. Let's yes. start here. Because you started off, you, you you hit the scene with a bang. Let's just start there. You win prestigious competitions and, you know, you get this record deal and now you're doing it all on your own. Tell me about the process from, you know, being a label signed artist you know, major label, and now you're doing this all on your own. Mm. I wouldn't say it's on my own. The Most High guides me every step of the way. Mm -hmm. I have to give all thanks and praise and esteem and honor and glory to y'all because it's not just me, right? Like I'm out here doing it physically by myself, but spiritually there's a greater thing that's greater than all of us that is guiding me. Um, so that's first and foremost, (laughs) Uh, otherwise it's, you know, it's community. It's like networking It's learning about different people and sharing experiences and stuff. It has been a very humbling and and different experience. I'll say, um, when I was signed to labels, I still was very much, very hands-on who Mm -hmm. is behind the scene creating, um, the press list for me who's doing all of the photo and album work for these people. Yeah. Like, you know, um, the first time I did a photo shoot, that was not something that I paid for the record. The A&R hit me up from Concord and said, Oh, this person is going to be working with you. And I had, you know, because I sold my own clothes, I had swatches and all kinds of things for that person to see. Like, this is the color scheme. This is the makeup color coordination. This is how I wear my hair. I do not, you will not be touching my hair because I wear my hair wrap. You know what I'm saying? Like, those kinds of things. I didn't know who was going to be in the room doing makeup. I didn't know who was going to be doing hair. I just knew you wasn't going to be touching mine. And I I needed to give color schemes because as a black woman, you just never know. And people can have you looking crazy because they don't always hire the right people who know how to do our hair and how to do our makeup and how to do the lighting to make sure that we're popping in the light and not looking like something real, real, real extra crazy. Right. So, you know, there were experiences like that. I didn't have any bad experiences because I kind of was leading things. You know, I'm the artist who had my hands in everything. All right. So this is what I'm going to wear. And then you guys adjust yourselves to what it is that I already have to offer. That's mm-hmm. kind of how I came. Just, I it, love just it. snatch from the, from, from jump through the gate. Just, all right, this is who, what it is. Yeah, take it or leave it. Yeah. We're rolling or we not. And that's, <laughs> I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I stayed prayed up about it. Like, okay, this is how you want me to move, guide me and show me, give me some wisdom. Yeah. Show me what exactly it is that I'm supposed to be doing and I'm going to do it. Right. So I just kept hearing, keep watching, you know, don't let things fall by the wayside, you know, in terms of marketing, in terms of promotion, in terms of everything, find out what you can find out. 
the, the beautiful thing about when I first moved to New York, I was 17 years old. And so I had to digest every single thing that was happening because I'm this young person who really knows nothing about nothing, (laughs) you know, and I had to, okay, so what is this? Okay. So how does this work? Okay. So, all right, cool. You know, I had to see and digest everything around me um, at school and, and in the streets, like in the universities and in the jam sessions, in the jazz clubs, you know, asking people things very hands-on. So all of that just, carried me through this whole entire journey so by the time I was ready to start my own label I had a I had great experiences you know I wasn't just starting from scratch so to speak because I listened Mm -hmm. and paid attention when someone else was doing it for me that is an amazing and inspiring way of moving you know what I'm saying because it's it's and the thing is a lot of times as you know, especially when you're a younger artist and a black woman, you know, it can be intimidating a little Mm -hmm. bit to take control of everything that you are. And you did that with no problem. I'm wondering, honestly, like how were, how were you received? How were you perceived when you were taking control of your image, of your creative process, when you were on the major labels? I'm just, because a lot of times we can be labeled as difficult or somebody who, you know, always has something to say, you know, <laughs> how, how were you, how did people take you? Honestly, um, I did get pushback. I got a lot of pushback and I got a lot of side eye. And when that started to happen, I put my blinders on, you know, like horses in a derby race. Yeah. My focus is what my focus is, my what my goals are. So every time somebody gave me pushback, I would take a deep breath and say, They don't know where I'm going. They've only experienced a lot of artists who have no idea what they want. They don't know who I am. I have to walk in my power and acknowledge who my creator is and keep my faith and keep doing what it is that I know how to do. They don't know. And it's okay that they don't know, but I'm going to show them and I'm not going to allow them to push me back. Mm. I'm not going to, you know, that was my, my approach to it. Uh well we want you to wear more make more makeup well I'm not comfortable with that right. um well we want you to play less standards well I didn't write that's not the kind of arrangements that I wrote I've already written that this is what it is well we want you well this is not you know I just kind of stayed true to what it is that I wanted to do and who I am and didn't really allow that to be there when when the pushback came I I ignored it you know. Yeah. And that was very difficult, but I spent a lot of time in the mirror. So if someone's doing my makeup, I would just look at myself in the mirror, you know, and and whatever those positive affirmations were for that day, I am, I am, I am, I am. Then I have to sit and live in that and not allow other things to taint me. Now, there, there were times when um, I became what they called the angry black woman. Because I had to actually open my mouth and say things, um, not in a belligerent or boisterous way. I was very tactful. Heard right, right. <laughs> I was very tactful, but I still had to, you know, put my foot down on things. Um, you know, and and to be honest with you, I've dealt with that my entire life, so it wasn't nothing that I can handle. And that's what I mean by I say I have to give all thanks to the Creator because everything that has led. Everything that has happened in my life has led to this point. You know, I grew up in prejudiced, racist Texas. Right. So this is not that's not. So then coming into the business scene where that that underlying and cutthroat um, industry is there and it's predominantly white male. That didn't bother me because I go into the grocery store or into the corner store and I say and I, you know, I'm paying for something and it's a dollar and 35 cent, you know, and I give him a dollar or it's a dollar 31 cent. I give him a dollar 35. I'm not getting change sometimes. And so you have to, you have to pick and choose your battles. Is it worth the four cent or can you live without this four cent right now? Wow. Wow. It's a lot of that. It is a lot of that, you know, and a lot of things that we're expected to just, shoulder you know and just you know 
what are you going to say about it? Is the attitude we get a lot of times. Oh, what? I did it. Now what? You know? <laughs> so it pushes you to the point where you have to open your mouth. You got to mm -hmm. say something or it'll eat you alive, literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to know how you came up with the name of your label, Empress Legacy Records. Um, I'm inspired by those women who like Sir Jonah Truth and Angela Davis and Nina Simone, you know, they're all empresses to me. Empress Menon, you know, they're all they're all empress Hadassah from the scriptures, even. You know what I mean? Who was named Esther, who was later named Esther. But I'm I'm inspired by all of those women who've really done really beautiful things. And they went through so many, so much adversity. And so it's really for them and then them in the future as well. <laughs> so maybe my little girls or their mm -hmm. little girls, right? All of the empresses. This is a legacy. And let's go on and keep, take that torch and keep on marching on, keep on running on, keep on flying on, keep on pressing on, right? Taking that and really building something on that, you know? Yeah. I don't like queen just because... Um, so many people who are not queens call themselves queens, <laughs> right? Yeah, male and female, or or other, right? And and sometimes that can be um, misleading to the children, but it can also be a little disrespectful to queens that are queens. So I just said empress, right? Because mm -hmm. no man is running this empire. No man is running this empire. Yes, it is indeed. empress that's I running it. it. You dig? So, yeah. and it's a, it's a legacy that I'm creating. Um, yeah, so that's yeah. that's where the name comes from. And speaking of running things, I mean, you've just garnered yourself another Grammy nomination, this time for Best Large Jazz Ensemble Album, which in and of itself is just groundbreaking. Thank you did you. this whole thing by yourself. I mean, everything from composing, arranging, from the rooted to the tutor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, how, like, I know you had to be exhausted. I'm sure there were times where you. I'm still exhausted. I'm yes. still exhausted. <laughs> and you ought to be, but the fact that you've done this, you've been nominated for this Grammy on your own label. Oh my God. It just makes me so proud. Yes. For you. All this thing beats with the most high. Well, it, it, it really was and still is a very humbling experience. It's not over, you know, like right now we're number eight on the jazz charts. That's really nice. Yeah. But you also have to put in work for that. It's not something that, you know, comes easily. Um, so it's it's a very tedious. It's been a very tedious process, but it's been so fun. Ah, it's been so fun. Just like, you know, just standing in my own bubble if you will you know just standing right in it and just walking and just not even walking just standing just standing alone just standing alone is a lot yeah um I'm so thankful because I'm honestly it's not even for me my children are five and seven they have no idea what I'm doing right now they have oh. no idea how important it is right but when they get older, they're going to be like, remember when mama was crying and she was just crying and she was just crying. Remember when she was laughing and she was laughing so hard she was crying. Aww. Remember when she didn't sleep and she was up singing and we were up singing with her. Remember, Aww. remember, remember, you know, it's for them. And it's for other mothers who feel like I can't, I can't, I have to give up my career to take care of my children. No, you don't, sis. Hey, you don't. You can have whatever it is that the Most High says you can have. That's what you can have. Wow. If you, if the mind believes it, then the body can achieve it. Indeed. Oh, my gosh. That's that's just so... I, I look at you as a superwoman because I'm like, you're doing all this <laughs> with these two beautiful little girls. They sing, too? They do. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to hear them. They are incredible. Wait for you to have them on an album. <laughs> I hope that's coming soon. Maybe. We'll see. I, I want them to, I don't want to push them into doing things just because it's cool for me. I want them to do it because that's what they want to do. Right. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed.
So you're going to be gracing the stage at the Hudson Jazz yes. Festival. And the theme is Lift Every Voice. Of course, mm -hmm. you're perfect to kind of, I believe you're closing things out on the 19th. I don't know. Um, I haven't looked at the lineup yet, probably. I'm sorry. That's okay. The lineup here, I have the Baylor Project. Yes, I know they're on it. <laughs> I've got Jimmy Green. Got okay. Warren Wolf, my friend Warren oh, Wolf. Oh, yeah. Daniel Watts, who's really, you know, making waves right now. Okay. Um, Ale Alexis Morast. Yes, I haven't heard her in a while. Yes. Okay. And the cool thing is that this is happening across two weekends, February 10th through the 13th. Okay. So you kind of get like a pre-love day, you know, musical thing going on. And then the 17th through the 20th and, oh, through the 20th. So you're on the second to last day of okay. the festival. Okay. And um, what can folks, are you bringing your entire noble force with <laughs> you or what are you going to give the people for this? The noble force is always with me, even though, even when they're not there. Right. Um, <laughs> it's a force to be reckoned with. Um, I, I'm not bringing the cats. I'm not bringing the entire 15 piece force. It'll just be uh, the trio with me on this. But we will be playing songs from Love and Liberation because that's the beautiful thing is that, uh, I'm sorry, Dear Love. The beautiful thing about this music is that we played Dear Love as trio tunes on the road before it was big band music. Oh, perfect. And I was hearing the big band sounds in my head. I just, I'm only one voice, so I can't sing <laughs> 12 parts, you know what I mean? Um, so we're going to be playing arrangements of the trio arrangements of some of the songs from Dear Love. We'll play some stuff from Love and Liberation. We'll play some stuff from the new record that has yet to come out and yet to have a name. But I'm always working on new stuff. So we'll be playing that as well. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. One yeah. of the most gorgeous tunes on Dear Love for me is Nia. Mm. I absolutely love that song. It touched me somewhere. I wasn't expecting yeah. when I first heard it. I played it on my podcast, Artemis yes. B. And I, I just kind of want to know what, went into it because Nia of course means purpose if you're into you know um that but tell us about the meaning and what went into making and writing Nia so it's actually not a jazz mule horn uh composition it's a Uni oh, Mojica nice. Uni Mojica wrote this piece oh wow yep and so there are pieces on the album so dear love I should probably say this, you know. Wait on the a minute, record. you mean the sax? Yes. Say, oh my goodness! Wow, mm -hmm. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Yuni Mojica composed Nia. Um, so when I first moved to New York, there were a lot of people who really just opened the door for me and just really held my hand or supported me in a miraculous way. Um, Bernard Harper, Lafayette Harris, Yuni Mojica. And so there are tunes on the record that I've either played with them or they composed. For example, um, what's the name? He could be perfect. That's Lafayette Harris's tune. He hired me to sing with him at the Lennox Lounge when he was doing the vocal sessions there back in like 2009, 2010. Um and I, we just kind of hit it off right away. He's like, "Wow, you you sound good. Mm -hmm. Do you do you play regularly with the band?" And I was like, "I do now." And it <laughs> it happened. He started calling me a lot, yeah. So that became the thing. And then Lennox closed down, but we found you know we found other ways. And then Uni, she had her first hit at Sister's Place, I think, in like 2011. And she was like, "You know, I really need a vocalist on this." And I was wondering if you would play. Uh, this tune I wrote called Nia and I cried the first time I heard it actually it it did that for me because not only did it remind me of sisterhood and in the way that Uni Mojica herself has reminded me of what sisterhood is when when I was home in Dallas if you are a sister and you need help people would always reach out to you or come through and help you I didn't have that same love here you know, on the East Coast, it was like, it's rough and hard and people are, it's, you know, it's different. So Uni really reminded me of that, that down South, that down home love, that's yeah. sisterhood, you know, and Nia does mean purpose. And the lyrics really set with me because at the time I was struggling. 
I was like, all right, I came to New York. I'm having a really hard time with these musicians, especially these men on the scene. You know, oh, you're a vocalist. You don't know what key. You don't know what tune. You don't know how to count it off. You know, I had to pay my dues, so to speak. And I was really learning so much, not just about being a woman, but about the industry within itself and how women were treated and just all kinds of things. And I didn't have that same same experience with women. Mm-hmm. You know, Maria mm-hmm. Schneider, Esperanza Spaulding, Terry Lane Carrington, Dee Dee Bridgewater. They didn't treat me like that. Diane Reeves. I, I didn't have those experiences. Even before I, I won the month competition, Lettucey was nice to me. Your voice is amazing, sis. Mm-hmm. You know, she didn't even know. This was before I won the month competition. Wow. There's not there's not so much hateration or, you know, foolishness among among the women in jazz. And I really mm-hmm. appreciate that so much. You know, we can just have a heart to heart and have good conversations. And when we come together, we can play good music. India Owens. What? Mm-hmm. I love playing with her, you know. So I really appreciated that. And that is why I decided, I was like, you know what? If I record this song, Uni's going to get some money for royalties. So let me hit my sister up and ask her if I can play this on the record. Make sure she's got her ASCAP BMI stuff situated. Yes. She can get her her royalties. Absolutely. Let me me do that for my sister because she looked out for me. Why wouldn't I? You know what I mean? So that's not even my composition. That's somebody else's composition, but somebody who really took care of me. Wow. Um, and showed me the ropes in New York. So I I just wrote an arrangement because it, it is dear and near to me. And it is it is my story, even though it's not my composition, it's still my story. Very much like um, Erica Badu's Green Eyes. It's not my composition, but I still suffer and I still have yeah. had that kind of pain, right? So, you know, you just kind of take something that's already there and kind of reiterate it. And that's what I did with the arrangement of, of Uni Mojica's Nia. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I just recently met her, and I had no idea that she wrote okay. that. So I can't wait to tell her. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. I want to know, you know, as an artist, a vocalist, you talk about the difficulties you've had in the industry. What is it that people who are on the non-creative side, like myself, you know, like a WBGO, like anybody who? is a supporter and a platform for artists like yourself. What is it that we can do to help support you even more? Mm. That's a good question that I have to think about. Mm. Take your time. It could be, because I'm always wondering personally, because I feel like it's my, it's my mission. It really is mm-hmm. my purpose to provide um, space, to make some kind of space for people like you. And so I'm always yeah. just wondering, you know, what can we do? What can we do? I want to do more. I think having us on the air is a lot within itself because you're opening your play. You don't know what your artists are going to say when you have them come to the air. You know, you have no idea, <laughs> right? You just pray and hope that whatever they say is cordial and it's, you know, the truth or it, they're speaking their truth. Um, so that's that within itself, just trusting me with your time and your time slot is is a lot. It's very supportive. Um, I don't know. I just feel like we in general as artists, we need some kind of forum where we can come together collectively and talk about these things. Mm-hmm. not on the air you know what I mean so that we can figure out what what it is that we need we can say these are the problems mm-hmm. we're going to talk about this this week and next week y'all all brainstorm let's brainstorm this and then come back and think about this and mm-hmm. see what what ideas we all have and come together I think something like that would be great okay like a think tank mm-hmm. like an artist think tank but not even think like I we all think we need action <laughs> Everybody's thinking right now, which is why we're in a we're in a situation that we're in on this planet. Everybody mm-hmm. thinking, <laughs> overthinking, you know 10, right? And nobody's putting any. Not nobody. There are people putting things into action, but the right people are not putting things into action. And yeah. so, you know, think, act, and act and do is what I would like to to propose. Not yeah. just thinking, yeah. And you know. I'm wondering because I know that, you know, of course, this artist's life for you has not been a crystal stare. <laughs> you know, how is it that you stay motivated? Like, what keeps you going? 
Um, I would say the music and and actually people saying that I can't. I love that. You can't really? do this. You can't do that. Cause I know I can. You know what I mean? They just don't. Like for example, I went to Concord right before I left them and I said, Hey, I wrote this big band stuff. I think you guys should check it out. I don't know if it's hip or not, but check it out. Well, to be honest with you, it's COVID, it's pandemic, Jasmine. We don't have the budget. I didn't even talk about going in the studio yet. I'm like, just take a listen. They're already telling me we don't have the budget. Remember, you actually talked about that pushback earlier. Right. right. I haven't even said anything about it. So I started shopping. I went to a bunch of different labels. I'm not going to, obviously, I just, it's not necessarily to say the names. Um, so I went to so many. I probably went to about 30 labels. Minimal. And I said, and not just jazz, just labels. And I said, um, hey, I've got this music, you know you're going to make a return on your investment because I have nominations. I have accolades. I have a Wikipedia page. I have a huge following on my social media platforms. You're going to make a return on your investment, invest in this project. And they all said, no budget, no budget, no budget. We can't, we don't know what's going to happen. So I said, well, what do I know how to do? What is it that I can do? I can, I'm, I'm good at what I do. I can sing. I have theory knowledge. So I'm I'm just going to teach. How am I going to teach? Okay, cool. I wrote a book about those things that happened in the industry that some people don't want to talk about. And some, you know, some people have it incorrect. And I just wrote my perspective on it. And I put out that book in August of 2020. By September of 2020, 200, 300, 400 people had contacted me and said, I want to study privately with you. I said, OK, cool. This is enough people for me to start my online school. And I did. I started the, the Jazz Horn International Artist Initiative. And they started coming by the numbers online, Japan, China, Istanbul, Africa, wow. places I didn't even know, like Lusania. I'm like, y'all like jazz? <clears throat> places I didn't even know like jazz, right? <laughs> And what helped me was having my social media and having all of those things, you know, open to where people all over the world could actually hear and see. And more people started listening to the music. The Spotify numbers went up. The, the Deezer numbers went up. The, the title numbers went up. You know, most of my fans, most of my biggest fans, I would say the largest market for me was is Brazil, has been Brazil. Wow. Mm hmm like billions of people listen to my music in brazil oh gosh, wow. so i was like all right cool i'm gonna make this class affordable because i know people in brazil if they love jazz that much they probably really i mean and honestly it probably is more than that listening to my music you know depending on how they're listening to it because they don't have access to spotify and certain things and, and favelas and stuff like that so it's like all right i'm gonna make this affordable and thousands of people signed up for that class. And I said, wow. okay, cool. I don't need no record label. I'm just going right. to do it myself. Right? So it started with the book. The it book started. led to the lessons. And all of that funded my record. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's incredible. Can we still get the book? Where can we get it? You can. You can get it at um, Barnes & Nobles. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on my website. It's out there. It's out there. And the classes will start back up in March. Right now, I'm kind of, I'm teaching at the new school, and I'm teaching at CUNY. I'm homeschooling, baby. So I was like, ah, let me stop for a little bit and really buckle down and focus on things that I need to focus on before putting it out again. And so we'll be launching the new classes in March because there were some things that I needed to reiterate that I saw, you know, after teaching the first course. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I like that. That's my motivation. You can't. You can't. Because every time you tell me I can't, I'm going to come back and do it even. I'm going to go harder. <laughs> and not for you, but, but but because I know who my creator is. Yes. Not not because I, I need to say, oh, I need to get back at you. I'm going to show you. No, it's not that. Right. It's just because when they say no, he always says yes. Always. So they can say what they want to say. <laughs> I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do what's already written for me in my life to do. That's as Jazz right. Horn, the jazz artist. I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter. You're going to do what you were told. And they don't right. know what you were told, right. you know? <laughs> so, hey. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. I want to open things up to, you know, our viewers, whoever's out there watching, if you have any 
questions or comments, I see we have one here from, is it Lucio D'Amato? He says, do you like Rochelle Farrell? I love Rochelle Farrell. Yes. <laughs> I love her. If you're listening, Rochelle, oh my goodness, I love you so much. Yes, indeed. I, I've tried to get to the Blue Note for the past 10 years to see her, and I couldn't do it, and she's not playing there. So I'm kind of sad. That's one person I really, 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 really want to meet. I know. Uh, I grew up. She was one of the first jazz vocalists I was able to see live as a child. And I was completely mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, she's incredible. Yeah, she makes me. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I love her so much. Indeed. Who else? Who else makes you feel uh, like that? Who else makes me feel that way? <sighs> Renee Marie. Mm, such a storyteller. Oh, Lovely. my goodness. <laughs> yes. Abby Lincoln. Mm -hmm. uh, Dinah Washington. Betty Carter, of course. Everybody yes. knows that. And, you know, and I'm not saying that, you know, in, in a boastful way. I'm just saying, like, so many people have said, I hear Betty Carter when I hear you. So yeah, she's a huge, huge mentor and inspiration of mine. Yeah, I really like boss too, just like you. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yep. Awesome. Mark, is it Lemu? Lemieux, I think. I can't see them, so. Um he says, When are you coming to Toronto, Jasmine? Oh, and he said, Bring Tiana too. <laughs> yeah, we can go. You can come through. I would come love through. to. Just, I don't know. Um there was something on the calendar. I think they they asked me if I wanted to go recently. Um, so that might be happening next year or maybe later on this year. I'm not 100% nice. sure, but I did see something in the window for that. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. If you have any other questions, guys, please feel free to ask them while we have the phenomenal Miss Jasmine Horn here. Mm -hmm. um, again, she's going to be playing the Hudson Jazz Festival. It's curated by a woman, Kat Henry. Yes. Um, which is cool. I love love to see it. Um, and the theme of the festival is Lift Every Voice. Jasmia hits on February 19th, 7 p.m., I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And um, you can get your tickets by going online at hudsonhall.org. Um, what do we have coming up for you next after Hudson? Um, after Hudson, I'll be playing in New Orleans with the New Orleans Jazz Orchestra. Wow, cool. I'm excited about that. That's at the beginning of March. Um, I'll also be doing something uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio at the beginning of April. And... Um, Just give us your website. We'll keep up with yeah. you. <laughs> uh, artistry of jazz horn at gmail.com. Okay. And your website? I'm sorry. I just gave my email address. Oops. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So the, the website is the same. It's uh, artistry of jazz horn.com. Okay. Artistry of jazz horn. And when you're ready to start your classes back, is that where folks would yep. register as well? Artistry of jazz horn.com slash education. Okay. Awesome. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. I thank really you, hope girl. that one day we can hang out for real. That would be good. In person. <laughs> <laughs> because as you mentioned, the funny thing is, you know, because of the whole pandemic and everything, you know, I've, I can't believe I've been here almost three years now, but it's been hard making real connections Friends. with folks, especially when you move to a new place and then, you know, a panorama hits. So mm -hmm. it's been it's been it's left much to be desired. So I would like to act <laughs> with cool people. So I hope that we can do that. Real Absolutely. Soon. I would love to do that. There's this um wonderful Ethiopian spot. It's actually my favorite restaurant in New York. Because Ethiopian food is my favorite food. It's called Masawa. It's on 121st. Okay. In Amsterdam. Oh it's so good. That sounds delicious. Ooh. I had I had some the other day. I literally left my apartment just to go down there and get some food and come back. Really? Yes. And I live like 30 minutes away. I oh, never wow. Know. I, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's uh I 
am on a hunt for Ethiopian food. Like I've been to Amsterdam and I've had Ethiopian food in Amsterdam. Okay. I've had, but like authentic places where like people from Ethiopia have right. migrated to a specific place and, and eaten there. Uh, DC. I'm from, yes, I'm, the, I'm from DC, Dukem. Sure, sure to... though. But sure, sure. Have you oh, been to sure, been to sure? No. You missed it out. You okay. Uh, <laughs> it's so good. I'm I'm an Ethiopian connoisseur, Ethiopian food connoisseur. Like okay. I'm, I'm not. I'll t be able to tell you because when I go on the road, my tour manager knows. All right, these are the three spots that are closest to the Ethiopian spot. You know, after the sound check, this is how we're gonna get you to the Ethiopian. Right. Restaurant. I love Ethiopian food. Yes, ma'am. I love that. So okay. Yeah. Well, let's do it. <laughs> No, I'm down for the cause. Yeah, well, thank you so much for this. I, I'm, I'm just so glad that you were able to be here on the Pulse and kick off the Pulse for 2022. Yeah. Boom. During Black History Month, no less. So, yes. yay. Thank you so much. Thank Desi. you. Thank you. And I appreciate you for having me. You're welcome. We'll see you soon. And we'll see you at the Hudson Jazz Festival. Get your on tickets the yeah. online, hudsonhall.org. Jasmia hits on February 19th. All right. Thank you. All right. Ciao, y'all. Take Have care. Have a good night. And thank you guys so much for joining me here on The Pulse. Uh, Happy New Year if I didn't get a chance to say it to you guys yet. I know it's February, but this is the first episode of The Pulse of the New Year. Stay tuned because next week I'll be chatting with Alicia Olatuja on Wednesday, February 9th at 8 p.m. right here on The Pulse. So thank you all so much. Have a great night. I'm Kiana Faircloth. I'll see you or you'll hear me on the airwaves, of course. Afternoon jazz, Monday through Friday from 4 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you guys so much. Happy New Year, Joyce. Thank you, Reginald. Take care. Bye-bye.